My name is Caitlin Parker. My group and I are here from Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina, and we are here today to present to you about the Elk Knob Art and Planning Project. Our primary community partner for this project is the Elk Knob Community Heritage Organization, also known as ECHO. We have been working with communities in Watauga and Ashe counties in northwestern North Carolina, as you can see here in red. This area is home to the Elk Knob State Park and the communities of Meat Camp, Tamarack, which is locally known as Pottertown, and Sutherland. The headwaters of the New River originate from the highest slopes of Elk Knob, which is 5,520 feet in elevation. The area is filled with thick forests, springs, bogs, and other rare fauna and flora not commonly found outside of the region. During 2000, the residents of these rural mountain communities were faced with the beginnings of what could be a radical transformation of their community because of the potential development of ski slopes and second home housing. To most, these new additions might be considered beneficial due to the business it could bring in, but local residents were concerned about deforestation, increased property taxes, and the re relocation of community members from homes that have been in the family for generations. Brittany Means, a graduate student from, for, the Appalachian of, for the Center of Appalachian Studies, can explain more. Thanks, Caitlin. So in fall of 2000, Dr. Pat Beaver began teaching a graduate course called Appalachian Culture and Social Organization. Uh, this course is based around community-based collaborative research and became part of the original Appalachian teaching project. For over 10 years, students in this course conducted oral history interviews and archival research in communities surrounding Elk Knob. This work helped local, local stakeholders secure land threatened by outside development and led to the creation of a 3,400-acre North Carolina State Park, Elk Knob State Park, which opened in 2005. The interviews, photos, maps, and histories from this project were all collected into a book called Voices from the Headwaters, um, which was actually published last year. And come by our table at the back at the break if you'd like to see a copy. Thank you. So in 2010, community arts consultant Robert Geip developed a community arts plan for the Elk Knob Community Heritage Organization. ECHO aims to sustain their rural communities by celebrating the natural and cultural heritage of their area. For the past two years, students participating in the Appalachian Teaching Project have collaborated with community members to create works of art which not only honor the past, but look forward towards the future. Here are some of the past projects the groups have worked on. My name is Ambrielle Button. So, in the development of the new art plan, we use two parallel research methods. One is the experiential research in which we got to know community members through face-to-face -face interactions, visited past sites, and some of these images are of us, our class visits to the public art sites and communities surrounding the Elk Knob area. And then the other is theoretical research in which we learn about sustainability through the local arts and culture. We learn, we learn that sustainability is more than just supporting the environment or growing the economy. Though it does include those, it is about maintaining and preserving the communities culturally about interpreting history and perpetuating local traditions. Those methods are important for Appalachian communities. Sustainable development does not just grow financial capital, but seeks to grow multiple forms of capital. And the community capitals frameworks developed by Flora and Flora demonstrates the different forms of capital necessary for the sustainable development. The community capitals frameworks um, creates a foundation or shows the that creating a foundation through local and cultural and social capital supports the growth of political and financial capital and this plan aims to support sustainability through the three themes that we have chosen for our potential projects which Levi Bear will explain thank you Ambriel so all projects accomplished through the implementation of this plan will fall under three core themes which are human interaction with the natural landscape vitalizing common spaces, and spanning generations. 
Uh, we arrived at these themes through class discussion, readings, and discussion with community members, and we believe that they accurately reflect the vision for this plan. The projects accomplished under this plan will reflect the tight bond between the community and the land. This is a beautiful place, and artists can easily find inspiration from the mountains, the plants, and the North Fork of the New River, which flows through the communities of Pottertown and Sutherland. This theme promotes the idea of living alongside nature and appreciating the local environment. In order to build tight-knit communities, there must be common spaces. In the past, these places have been churches, post offices, or stores. By enhancing the development of common spaces, we can foster the development of social capital and sustainable communities. And this community has a vibrant and important culture. The goal with this theme is to connect the past, present, and future. The traditions, pastimes, and stories of the community should be preserved, cherished, and remembered for future generations. These themes will guide all the projects that are accomplished under this plan, and we have already begun to put them into practice through the process of developing our plan, which Kenny Logston will explain. Thank you, Levi. So the process of our art plan began with a very important step, and that's meeting with the members of the community. At the beginning of our semester, we were able to meet the rangers at Elk Knob State Park and engage in uh, craft activities at the annual Community Headwater State Festival. Uh, this was, was exciting for our class because it gave us our first glimpse of the community. Um, and also not to mention this was exciting because the Community Headwaters Day Festival hosts what the community members like to brag as the world's largest potluck. And as hungry college students, this is pretty exciting as well. Uh, so these themes that Levi discussed for us are the th uh, three key premises for which, uh, for which we designed much of our plan around. After accomplishing this, our class came up with multiple ideas for projects that would embody these themes. We, however, narrowed these ideas down to the most appealing and viable options to present to the ECHO board. Presenting to the ECHO board was significant because it provided us with our first opportunity to gain feedback from the community, which is necessary for any collaborative project. Uh, we were also able to build relationships at this board meeting, which was beneficial because these connections would help facilitate the progress of a selection of our projects. Once we had the initial feedback from the ECHO meeting, the members of our class began conducting individual sites or site visits throughout the community. The purpose of these visits was to develop partnerships within the community and initiate deeper uh, conversations about the execution of the art plans. To start, uh, we're going to have Erin Terrell describe her mural project for us. As Kenny discussed, our group spent a great deal of time getting to know the Elk Knob area and the people who live there. A prominent site we found in the community is the Eller Store Mural, which, as Caitlin mentioned earlier, is a project from the previous Echo Art Plan. This, vis this mural visually reflects the Elk Knob landscape and was created through community engagement in the design, painting, and installation of the mural itself. For my site, I was excited to take on the project of designing a plan to create a second mural for this cinder block building in the community. In the future, this mural will activate and vitalize a previously unnoticed common space in the area and will provide an opportunity for community members to work with a local muralist to design and create an image that reflects their shared history as a community. Our plan provides ECHO with the local resources, such as this building being volunteered for the mural, and additionally, we have created relationships with the Arts Council of Watauga County as well as the Arts Council of neighboring Ashe County to provide connections to local muralists as well as grant funding opportunities for this and future projects. So I've been investigating the topic of wood sculpting in the uh, Elk Knob community. And more specifically, I've been focusing on a pilot art project that emerged from an idea from community member Larry Braswell. Mr. Braswell's vision is to sculpt the trunk of a tree located in his front yard and adjacent to Meat Camp Road into a life-size black bear. Doing so requires the assistance from many partners in the area, such as a crew to safely cut down the tree to, uh, for appropriate size for sculpting, as well as hiring an artist to design and produce the sculpture. I was, for example, able to meet with local artists Chris Smart and Tom Sternel, who assisted my research with their knowledge and expertise in sculpting. This project will most greatly reflect the connection with the natural landscape and the vitalization of common space. Firstly, the co uh, connection between the community and the natural landscape is clearly, exp uh, clearly expressed through the image of a black bear, an iconic fauna figure in the region. 
Moreover, the wood sculpture, along with the mural project just down the road, will aesthetically, uh, aesthetically vitalize the stretch of Meat Camp Road leading up to Elk Knob State Park. Together, these projects will bring new life to the area by serving as appealing landmarks and culturally rich aesthetics that both natives and visitors can enjoy. So an important feature of the Elk Knob area is the North Fork of the New River, which flows through the communities of Pottertown and Sutherland. This plan, the plan for this side is to put in a picnic area and river walk along the banks of the stream, uh, and as well as native plants such as the black willow as a means of stream bed restoration. This plan will work to promote sustainability by allowing the public to interact with the natural landscape of the area, as well as using community members to maintain it. Now, I've been in contact with the New River Conservancy, and they have provided me with ideas for native plants to use for stream bed restoration, as well as being willing to partner with us on the project. So the staff at the Elk Knob State Park has already built a small amphitheater out of stacked rocks, as well as benches of reclaimed wood from the park. The park rangers are in the last stages of finishing the amphitheater so that it can be exhibited during the North Carolina State Park Centennial, January 1st, 2016. Vitalizing this common space will provide the community an area for socializing, sharing culture, and for it to be a space for them to express themselves through various forms of visual arts. Since the amphitheater has already been built, my main tasks were to find potential community partners, brainstorm ideas for scheduling and setting up performances, and to locate resources to um, create a potential internship through Appalachian State University to help manage the park. With the Elk Knob State Park, the amphitheater is not the only area that we have been looking at as a potential project area. There's also Beach Tree Trail, that, is, that site that is available. This, uh, the idea for this project is to create an outdoor art gallery using the tree stumps that were cut down from dead trees in order to make the trail. And this fits with the themes because it will interact with the natural landscape it will vitalize the space of Elk Knob State Park and draw people in, and it will span generations by exhibiting art of the local culture, and a pit, uh, the, continue, the goal for this is to be a continual project in which new uh, art is needed, so generations to come will be able to participate and help and see older artwork. And uh, currently, we have been talking with the Student Art League at Appalachian State University, and they have agreed to start working in the new year. And with these plans in place, this project will need no additional funding. And with that, the idea is to have the gallery ready for the opening New Year's Day 2016 to help celebrate the centennial of North Carolina State Parks. So after conducting these individual site visits, our class was able to finalize the details of our art project. We presented the, this final plan to the ECHO board this week and received final approval from our com uh, community members. Throughout this semester, as we've gotten to know the Elk Knob community and the people who live there and the place they call home, we found that developing sustainable arts is truly a matter of developing strong and sustainable communities. By engaging the talents and resources of people within the community, understanding the connections and relationships that exist within a community, and understanding how to utilize the structures and natural landscapes that surround those people, communities can organize and achieve common goals. For Elk Knob, understanding this approach to community arts and community growth has allowed its people to overcome the threat of the development of ski slope. In the future, these same elements of sustainable community will help community members preserve the unique character of this beautiful rural area. The plan we have created functions as a guide for the Elk Knob Community Heritage Organization to continue to create a meaningful set of community art objects and experiences in the next five years. Our group has established a set of relationships, resources, and a series of steps to complete the projects that have been developed. We have formatted that information into a comprehensive plan that will allow the Elk Knob Community Heritage Organization to encourage agency within the Elk Knob community uh, as they develop and sustain artistic presence in the community for years to come. And here is a list of community partners that we would like to thank. Thank you guys.